Hello, I'm Russell Poynton from Edison. Uh, I'm delighted to today to have Darcy Walsall Reimer, the Chief Executive of Card Factory, with us to talk about the many exciting things that are happening at Card Factory. Hello, Darcy. Hello, very nice to, uh, to be here and very nice to be here. So, I really appreciate the invitation. Thank you. Great, thank you. So, my first question is uh, many of our viewers may not be so familiar with Card Factory, they may think of it as a put on the UK-based business and bricks and mortar retailer. So could you just talk about the many changes that you're putting through the business? Yeah, very good. So I think it's probably really helpful um, for your viewers to, for me to start and just talk about the business model. So Card Factory, we think of ourselves as a vertically integrated value retailer of, uh, that operates in the celebrations market. And if I bring that to life a little bit, so the virtually integrated model, we start with design. So we have a, a design studio with more than 70 colleagues that's based up in Wakefield in the north of England. And the design studio designed all of the products that we, or the majority of products that we sell, excluding some, some maybe some licensed products. Um, we then manufacture what we design. And for cards, we manufacture 80% uh, of what we sell in our well-invested uh, factory up in uh, Belden, West Yorkshire, um, where we produce over 200 million greeting cards a year in that facility. Uh, we do our own warehousing, and then uh, we only outsource uh, the, the distribution, and then we sell our product through our own channels. So we have 1,058 retail stores across UK and Ireland, we sell them across our two trading websites, carfactory.co.uk, gettingcrystal.co.uk, and we have an emerging wholesale business, what we call partnerships, where we're starting to, to kind of wholesale. And, and, and effectively, that's, you know, that's our model. And we're operating in the celebrations market, and that is historically, the company had been focused on the card markets, but we have redefined our market to be cards, gifting and celebration essential. So that's, um, if you think about it in terms of a, a, a customer celebration, so what, what are you celebrating? Well, I'm celebrating mom's birthday. So I'd start with a card um, because uh, that that's what people generally come for. So so let's get you a, a card for your mom and, and let's look for the right one. Is it a contemporary or a traditional card? Then let's get a gift. We, and we appreciate it. it might not be the main gift, but let's get a, a secondary gift a candle or a chocolate that says to the best mum of the world. And then how are you celebrating? Would you like balloons? Do you need decorations from the table? And then some dressing, some wrap bags in order to kind of bring the whole thing together. And that total market is a 13.4 billion market that we're operating in. That's great, thank you. The second question is, uh, could you give, just give some insight into what's happening in the core UK category markets? Give some insight into what's happening by demographic, by age, what's happening online versus offline, and why you think there is so much to play for. If we start with cards, and, and then I'll move across to, to sub, some of the other categories. So if you think about the card market, it's actually a very resilient market in the UK. Uh, in value terms, the market is largely flat. It has a um, ever so slight volume decline that's, that's effectively made up in value, so we say it's a flat market. And actually, um, people are buying across all age groups that are called across all demographic groups. They're, it isn't overly skewed um, to, to one or, or, or the other. And, and the primary reason for that is that everybody wants to celebrate. Everybody loves celebration. And our business is anchored in, you know, we believe that customers deserve uh, celebration. Um, and, 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 that, and that's why um, it, you know, it's, it's extremely uh, resilient. I think uh, that as we sort of move across to kind of gifting and celebration, again, those markets are in growth. So, so we, and we, and if we look at that, total celebration market, we're about 60%. So there's plenty of opportunity and growth for us yeah. in the future. 
And Card Factory has quite a significant uh, store presence, and I know it's quite an important part of the growth going forward. So could you talk about what you're doing with the estate in terms of growing it and what you're doing with the stores? First of all, our store estate is our greatest asset. So we have 1,058 stores right across the UK and Ireland. And you will find Card Factory on um, in downtown city centre with people think of as traditional high street locations. We also work in neighborhoods, we work in shopping malls and uh, in retail parks. So wherever there's a retail setting, our business model uh, works in that. And the primary reason for that is um, people aren't making a special trip to buy a card. They're buying a card whilst they're doing something else. And actually having a uh, car factory proximity, proximity to where they want to show. That's why uh, the model works. So we, um, it, it, it costs us basically between 80 and 100,000 pounds to build a store. We get, uh, you know, on average, it's a very short payback. So around two years, uh, you know, basically pay, payback. And we typically sign short leases. So usually five years with a break at year two or year three in our favor. Um, you know, we're, we're, wherever possible. And if we look across the portfolio, the average lease length to the next lease event, uh, either a break or an exit, is about two years. And, um, what, and effectively what we do is we monitor the portfolio um, it's on a, on a, literally on a constant and an ongoing basis. And where we see footfall moving, or the, the high streets changing, or there's new developments, we're able, given um, the profile of, of, of the leases, we're able to pivot and kind of move, and basically move with it. As a, as a result of that, it's a really strong portfolio. We've less than 1% of stores are, are lost bake, and even those are, are relatively small compared to um, what I've seen elsewhere. And it's probably the strongest store portfolio um, out there on the high street. And a key part of becoming an only channel retailer is have a strong online presence as well as physical presence. And you've made lots of changes to your online uh, platforms in, in recent years. So could you just talk about uh, the changes you've made and why you're so optimistic about the outlook for online? Yeah, so uh, go back to the market. So 80% of the market is, a is, a, is, is taking place in physical stores and 20% is, is online and uh, it hasn't grown in online as fast as it has for other, you know, perhaps fashion or other, other retailers. And, and the reason for that is that um, when you come into Car Factory, we're probably the, one of the only retailers on the high street. When you walk through our door, you're not buying for yourself, you're buying for somebody else. And what you buy uh, denotes your relationship with the person that you are sending it to. So that purchase is actually very important and how you help the person, your loved one, how you help um, celebrate that life moment is really important. And so there's, you know, people like to, um, you know, to physically uh, touch it. Having said that, it, it is 20% um, in the market and it is growing, albeit may, maybe slower than, than other segments. Um, but for us, it's the same customer shops online as shops in store. It's, it's the same customer. And they're using it potentially for, for different things or for different occasions. So if I, if I take my own behavior, for example, I, I wouldn't dream of uh, sending a card online uh, to my mom or to my wife because you know, it's, it's more than my, you know, my, my life's still worth something to me. Um, uh, however, uh, what we might do is, um, to friends, we might send them a card with a photograph of the last time we were together. You know, personalization, um, which you can do online that you can't do in a store. So, so they have different roles. Um, but fundamentally, because it's the same customer, we think the, having, having being an omnichannel retailer is the way in which you service the customers. So it's about however and wherever and for what occasion that the customer wants to celebrate will be there for you with the right offer, uh, whether that's in a physical store or online. 
And then it's about being cl really clear what each of the, 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 the channels is for. And if we move on to international, uh, international is the greatest area of growth for you over the coming years, uh, is your expectation. So could you just talk about the markets you're targeting, why they're attractive, and perhaps more importantly, why car factory is relevant to those markets? Yeah. So if we take a, a, a step back from that and, and go back to the overall strategy, what we... Um, Launched our strategy at the, uh, at the capital market state in May last year. We effectively outlined 180 billion pounds of new growth in the life in the plan. 80 billion coming from stores, 30 million from online and omni channel, and 80 million coming from partnerships. So, when I talk about partnerships, um, that's actually split to UK and international. The role of partnerships in the UK is two things. One is it's the impulse purchase. So seven o'clock at night, you've forgotten to buy your mother card. You're probably not coming to car factory. You might go to a supermarket. So we want to be there to, to, to service you. And the second thing is, is there's many towns and cities in the UK that has one or two card factories that still has more opportunity, but perhaps not enough to open a second right through its door. Um, or there might be retail settings where re real estate isn't available and we want to be there. So that, that's why we're in the 223 Matlin stores, for example, it's, uh, infill or giving us access to, to perhaps properties we, we would or, ordinarily have. Uh, but the lion's share is then international. So we um, we went and uh, did a, uh, a joint study with Global Data to really understand the celebrations markets across the world and really breaking down the card market into English speaking, local language, what the trends were on sort of gifting and celebrating. And that gave us uh, a list of interesting countries. We then, uh, through, you know, as you would do in any strategy, overlay various things, political considerations, financial considerations, and we came up with our seven markets of interest that, 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 that we, we outlined. And we had several business models, you know, basically to test. And our plan is weighted to, to the back end of the plan. So where we are now is we, um, are, we have a, Strong wholesale, we're, uh, and we're, we're, we're selling it to Australia to a company called the, the Reject Strap, um, where they have several hundred stores which we're supplying the cards to. We have launched a franchise uh, with our partners in the UF in the Middle East, where we 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 have four stores. We believe you know, we, there's going to be 36 uh, over the course of the next uh, few years, and we will uh, you know continue you know that work to expand looking at the, the seven markets of, of interest. But what were, you know, once we had finished the study, we visited each of the markets and, um, and we met with prospective customers. And actually the car factory offer has relevance in, in each of the markets. So people are really interested in what we're doing and they're interested in the differentiation that might bring you know to to their market compared uh, to everything that's in them. so that so our sort of value offer we believe is relevant you know all around the world and the question is is how do you go to market um and 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 and, it, and effectively how to execute that which is is what, what they're in so in addition to that we acquired a business called they're saying greetings in south africa so they say greetings is doing everything that we want to do in the international space. So it's got retail stores, um, it has some manufacturing, and it has six and a half thousand points of distribution where um, where 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 this where yeah we're we're selling cards, um, gifts, and, and and celebration essentials. And, and uh, yeah, so I, I we believe the op the opportunity is there, and we believe the future is very bright. Darcy, my final question is, today you've just released very strong FY24 results, so would you like to give an overview of what the key highlights from the results are for you? Yeah, so first of all, we're extremely proud of the results that we've achieved and that we'd be able to announce today. Of course, it's always you know, my pleasure to be able to announce a good set of results at the end of the good year, but behind that brilliant year, there's a lot of hard work by 9,000 colleagues up and down the country and kind of I pay tribute to them and this is their results. Um, but 
if, if I look at the results, so we announced sales growth of uh, over 10%, a 27% increase in profit growth, um, uh, an improvement in cash, a uh, reduction in net debt. But if I look about what's behind the results, uh, and if I think about the sales, so behind the sales growth is the strategy working. So one of the key initiatives has been around looking at um, how we drive central sales growth by looking at range, what we sell, um, the space allocation, so the breadth of the range, the depth of the range, how the, the, the flow of the store and also the service. Um, and, if, and, and we see that we, um, we, re, we uh, reallocated space and we reduced space of card by 7%. Uh, that led to us being able to, to increase space to gift and celebration essentials by 16%. And as a result of that, our card sales have continued to grow. So we had like for like card sales of 4.8%, and that's in a flat market. Uh, but of course, uh, gifting sales increased by um, you know, over 13%, and uh, celebration essentials by 6.7%. So we're seeing you know, traction behind the strategy in terms of, of uh, driving sales, and of course that has converted into profit. Of course, the other thing we've been able to announce today is the successful refinancing of the business, as well as the resumption of dividends. And of course, I'm very early in the uh, uh, in the roadshow weeks, but the but the shareholders that I have spoken to today are equally pleased with the results. And once again, pay tribute to all of our colleagues at Card Factory for a great set of numbers. That's great to hear. Um, well, thanks very much for being with us today, and. Uh, Look forward to continued strong news for the year ahead. Thank you very much.